Welcome to our St Matthew's virtual service. We think about people joining us uh, all around the world who are celebrating Father's Day. And this morning having uh, children, very special children of all ages. <laughs> like Stevie, <laughs> you know, uh, in helping us in our service. Uh, and so we pray for um, as the importance of fathers and uh, God to help them in a special way, especially at the moment. <laughs> especially at the moment, <laughs> and ask for God uh, to, to be with them and to help them do that very special task of caring, and protecting, guiding, uh, and regardless of you, whether your father is, uh, is a young father or perhaps is our oldest member of our congregation, Edgar, uh, who is uh, 102, watching our service today as well. Uh, we give thanks for fathers everywhere and for all those who care. <laughs> for Father's Day. And uh, what about your own father and grand grandparents? And uh, and where were they? Are they are they from here? Yes, well, the family lived at Bathanga. 
Yeah. My father yeah. had the post office at Bethanga. Yeah. Yeah. And then they moved into Warbury in retirement. And um, and you have children yourself and grandchildren? Yeah, two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. uh, three children. Mm -hmm. One's in Aubrey, one's locked up in Box Hill in Melbourne, <laughs> haven't seen her, and a son up on the north coast. Two, one, one grandson is in America, so we wow. don't know when we might get together. Yeah. He would normally come home for Christmas, but that's a bit doubtful, I think. It's been certainly a very different, a very different Father's Day for you. Yeah. Uh, but I like to think that uh, if they click onto our service, <laughs> well, well, they'll be able to see you as well. And so uh, thank you so much uh, for all those people who can't be with those people that they love and those yeah. things that are familiar. One of the things that uh, most familiar about St Matthews is the music. And so thank you for playing uh, this morning uh, to, uh, to make life slightly better and more normal. My pleasure. <laughs> I hope I gave some people some enjoyment. And, and also remembering that uh, normally up here in the choir lock we have uh, Fran, of yeah. course, part of our lovely choir and how special that community is. And I know you've been meeting together on Zoom as well. Yes. Uh, but it's, again, it's uh, different days for people in, in, in music, isn't it? Yeah, it's not quite the same as singing together. <laughs> no, that's right. It isn't. But thank you so much for, for doing what you can. Good. Uh, thank you, Father. And, uh, and, uh, and happy Father's Day. Thank you. <laughs> the St Matthews family up there in Albury. I'm Rod Brown and I'm talking to you from my rather echoey study in Melbourne. I'd rather be outside but the windy spring day makes it impossible to record out there. My connection with Albury and St Matthews goes back to before my birth. My family have lived in the area since the 1920s and mum and dad were married at St Matthews in 1956. I grew up uh, partly at Talangata and partly out at Mountain Creek. All my adult life, I've lived in Melbourne. So it's only in recent years that I've really got to know St. Matthew's again, as I took mum to church on the Sundays when I came up to visit her. During that time, I've developed a lot of lovely friendships there, and I really look forward to renewing those once the restrictions are over, I can leave Melbourne and I can cross the border into New South Wales. It's been a lovely time being up there, I really enjoy the involvement with the people of Albury, the family at St Matthews, the activities that are there, 
Uh, I love coming up for the music festival every year. I'm a rusted on attendee of that, that's for sure. And hope that I'll be able to be there with you in November this year. During this time when we're all locked down here in Melbourne, I've had plenty of time to ponder what the future is going to bring for me. I'm looking at getting on with some of the projects that I've got in life, the things that have been keeping me uh, promised to do things but never got underway. Over my shoulder there is a cousin of the aeroplane that I'm trying to restore and hopefully when I can get back outside Melbourne to where it's located, I can get some work done so that eventually it can have some wind beneath its wings again. Toys for boys, you might say. So, all things said, despite the fact that this is not necessarily the happiest time for everybody in Melbourne, I really do feel that we have a positive future, we just have to get there. So, let's move on. The epistle is from the third chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For we are working together with God. You are God's farmland and God's building. But each person must be careful how he builds. Remember, the foundation we are building on is the teaching of Jesus Christ himself. And this is the only foundation worth building on. Whether a person builds on this foundation with gold, silver, expensive stones, wood, hay or straw, the workmanship of each person will become evident. It is our intention and motivation that needs to pass the test, and this will be rewarded by God. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Ready? Right. Three, Three, two, one. Hi, Hi. we're Swarbox. I'm James. I'm Dave. I'm Andrew. And I'm Anthony. <laughs> and that was so <laughs> worth it. Now, so going. Going. what are we doing? This is a QA. and a I put questions into a hat, and Dave's going to pull one out and read it, and then we're going to answer it. But before we do that, we're going to surely say a bit about ourselves, who we are, All right. and how we got here. We we'll go, start right. with you, James. Might I talk about myself, I'll talk about you. Talk about yourself. Talk about okay. yourself. I'm James. My age is undisclosed. That's good. <laughs> I play the organ for the group. Yeah. Pretty boring. Yeah. Soon to change. All right. Hi, I'm Anthony, and I like to fight. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is David. I'm at university, second year, uh, and now I live here. <laughs> what are you studying? Good, that's right. What are you studying? What are you studying? Uh, biomedicine at the University of Melbourne, and I live here now. Uh, I'm Andrew, Andrew. I'm a teacher. Mm. Alright, now, do you want the hat or you just want No. That? Okay, I'll keep that. What instruments do you play? What <laughs> instruments do you play? <laughs> All right. well, Excellent question. You, I play you the organ and I play the piano and I did play the violin in high school. Why do you play more? What? Why do you play more? Violin. That should be one of the next videos. Well, if you play too many things, you spread yourself too thin across the True. Piano. Like, yeah, butter. Could you, like, introduct, play, like, the introduction of the violin and then quick? Or just, like, or just, like, be about to play and then just jump straight to the organ. I could. That'd be cool. I wish you did that one time. Something with a violin. And melodica as well. <laughs> Do you really? I've got a melodica. Yeah. Do you? What is that? Yeah. It's something you play. Oh. Oh. You know, with oh, the oh, long oh, tube. Oh, with oh, the long yeah, tube. Yeah, yeah, those. Yeah. Isn't that just piano yeah. that you blow at the same time? Yeah, it's called a <laughs> skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I played the melodica. <laughs> yeah. I play the harpsichord as well. And is that my turn? Um, yeah. I play piano and guitar. Well, but I play tambourine as well. <laughs> as well. Crackers. As well, the as crackers. in like as well, but also as well. And the clackers. Uh, I only stuff. play piano. I tried to learn guitar, but it hurt my fingers so much. You know when you press on the strings? Because <laughs> yes. they weren't yes. nylon, they were the but metal you ones. Got I started the most to important instrument. The most important instrument the is your heart. No, no, no wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. I was so close. Four box. All so right, cut back, yes. Singing as well. So does James as well. And James. Yeah, I only James. sing because I couldn't play piano well enough. <laughs> he could. We saw so a video of him. Why did you see that video? Oh, no, I saw it. I just you tried did. to watch it. You just ignored it and just like make, make sure the conversation kept going. I just had <laughs> way too much, way too many bad memories. Right. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Number six. 
What is the best part about meeting regularly? Regularly. That is how you spell regular. The best part. Going to the pub afterwards. The food. The pub. <laughs> trying every palmy. Trying every palmy. In all group. True. We're nearly there. Otherwise, it would take too long. We're nearly there. The best part for me is. It's hard because there's no good parts. Is that about the best part? Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm trying to be oh. respectful here. Yeah. No, let's uh, yeah. For me, the best part is go- going back into making music. It's been a little while, mm. and we don't get to do that so often. And that is true. in the interim, uh, you know, growing experience and, and, and learning more. Well, actually, yeah. I think the best part Correct. is. We have the recording, and we can go back to it any number of years down the track and remember the times and the fun times we had. Correct. They were fun times. So really, we could be singing together and making music for a very long time. Mm, Potentially. Uh, Mm. Until babies. Oh yeah, we're done. Okay, we just spent a jungle of babies around it. Jungle of babies. It can be done. Is that it? That's it. The hat is empty. Look, that that was um. That was good. That That was good. That was was fun. That was new fun. It's Father's Day today, and so I would like to tell you a story about a father. And here it is. It's called The Father's Great Love, and it's a Bible parable retold by Father Paul, and that's me. Now, once upon a time, there was a father, and he had two sons. And one day, the younger son said to him, Dad, you know that when you die, you're going to divide the property that you own and give it to your two sons. Well, I wonder if you could give that to me now, like before you die, because I can't wait. And... For some strange reason, the father agreed and said, OK, son, you can have your share of the property now. And so the younger son sold all, all, all that property and he put the money in a bag in his satchel and off he goes with all that money to somewhere. And his father and his brother stay at home and watch him go. He was going to have a big adventure with all that money. And he travelled to some faraway land where there were lots of people. And he had a lot of fun because he had lots of money. And he went to parties every night and drank lots of beer and wine and ate lots of food. One party after another because he had so much money. And he used to buy people drinks and he was the talk of the town. And in time he also developed some bad habits like gambling. And soon... He had spent all the money that he had, and he had none left. He was destitute. All his friends left him, and he could find nowhere to stay. And so he lived with the pigs, because a farmer gave him some work to do, like cleaning the pigsty and feeding the pigs. In fact, he was so hungry that he even ate the pods that the pigs ate. He was eating pig food. And he was so unhappy, he said to himself, in my father's house, at least somebody loved me. In my father's house, I had a roof over my head, a place to stay, people who loved me, and food. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go back to my father. I'm going to say, Father, can I work uh, in, on your farm? Could I uh, earn my dignity back and my respect back by becoming a hired worker? 
That's what I'll do. I'll prove to my father that I can really work and, and earn something. So he bows his head and kneels before God and says, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And so he gets up and he begins the long journey back to his home, along the long winding road that leaves the foreign land that he was in. He'd have to journey all the way back to the country where he came from. And then, as he approaches his father's house, he would have to go through the village where everybody was. Because he had brought great shame, not just on his father, but great shame on, all the, on the whole village. And so he would have to walk through the village and people would be booing him and hissing him and saying, go away. In fact, in those days, they would throw stones at you to keep you away. He had to face all that. And his father was in the house there. And who knows whether his father would even come out because he's brought such shame upon his father's household. But when he was still far off, before he had even entered the village, his father saw him. And his father got up and ran as fast as the old dignified man could run. He ran past all the villagers, ran to meet his son, because that was how much he loved his son. And when he reached his son, he opened wide his arms and brought his son into his em embrace. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But then he didn't say the thing about making me as one of your hired servants, because he already knows. Because his father came out and uh, ran through the village and is hugging him that he's been accepted as a son and he wouldn't ask to be a hired servant. And so the father turns round and he says to the servants, he says, go and get the best robe and put it on my son. And of course, the best robe was the father's robe, the head of the household. And he says, put shoes on his feet. Because he's not a slave, only slaves had bare feet in, in the house. He was a son, therefore put shoes on his feet and put a ring on his finger. Because the ring means that he has the authority of the father, he can he can do trade deals and buy and sell because he has the father's ring. Because the father has now reinstated the son back to his former position. Because he said, my son was lost, but now he is found. He was dead, but now he is alive. And so they had lots of a, a big feast. They killed the fatted calf and they had lots of celebration to celebrate uh, the coming home of the sun. But you look out the window there, that's his brother. Now, his brother was coming in from the field. He had been working. He wasn't happy. But that's another story for another time. Goodbye. Good morning from the Besta household here in Wangaratta to all of you in Albury. It is lovely to be able to connect with you on this Father's Day celebration, especially in some parts of the world, but definitely here in Australia. I come from South Africa, where we celebrate Father's Day on the third Sunday in June. So that was when I called my father. Fortunately, I have my one son with me here. Um, 
to be able to celebrate with me. The other one has gone off to work. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm sure he must be thinking of me because he just celebrated a birthday yesterday and uh, we did spoil him um, doing the sort of fatherly thing, as you would know. It is really lovely to be able to share with you some thoughts about what it means to be a father and maybe even within today's context. For me, it has been a great privilege to be able to be father to my two sons, as it is for me to be husband to my wife, and um, to go through those growing pains of the many years, the questions that have been put to me, the challenges that I've been put up with, especially in the Australian context, uh, when my elder son turned 18. I have never seen an 18th birthday party the way I did. I have never seen so much booze in all my life but I realize that this is what fatherhood or parenthood even is all about. I'm very happy to be able to share uh, my life with my boys and feel absolutely privileged um, to be their father. And I hope that they do feel privileged for me being their father as my sons are very, very special to me. While I need to say so is my wife as well. Um, it has been a rather awkward journey for me since I become the Bishop of Wangaratta. Father Peter, in communicating with me the other day, spoke about the do-it-yourself type of handbook. And um, sometimes, you know, the Bishop is referred to as the spiritual father, in my case, because I'm a male um, of the diocese. So I've been trying to be one who would connect to our clergy and to our people have been, done, been doing this through various ways. Um, Zoom services was one of them, but also a telephone connection um, and sometimes just email and having that kind of conversation. So this has been really wonderful to be able to do that. Now, I was hoping that we would be able to connect more one to the other, um, sort of visit people within the context of their parishes. That has unfortunately not been able to happen. I had an appointment with you in Albury on the 29th of March. That did not happen, but I look forward to a time when we can have this kind of connection. I can almost imagine that within Victoria today, it must be very sad for many who will not be able to connect um, to their parents and especially their fathers on this Father's Day. We are expecting some announcements this afternoon from the Premier. And so we look forward to whatever might come our way so that we can have this connection um, with those whom we love and those who love us. But I'm very privileged in our context to be sharing this Father's Day with my boys. I unfortunately will not be able to call my father in South Africa because he celebrated this in June already. Now, when I was um, in ministry for only a short little while and my son, Kyle, um, came to me with a particular question um, when he heard somebody calling me father. He sort of looked at me and said, um, Daddy, why does everybody call you father? You are my father. And I said, yes, Kyle, I am. But, you know, I do have this connection and this is the title that they've given to priests, uh, male clergy especially. And um, that is just the way it is. And I thought one of the ways is to get him sharing particularly about his feeling, um, having to share me as the dad um, with so many. And I thought, oh, maybe Michelle should be the one asking him the question. So I'm going to ask her to do that now. Kyle, how do you feel about sharing your dad with so many others? I'm cool with it, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not just spiritual father he's actually father figures to some of my friends that unfortunately don't have that male figure in their life so he's everyone's dad well there you hear it from the young man um, so thank you for sharing that Kyle. and i'm hoping that kian would share the same kind of sentiments um now when you ask me that question you know why do you everybody else called you your dad what do you think went through your mind during that time i remember i was probably seven or something i remember that they're saying 
I was at the church's car park, I remember when I asked you that question. But I don't know, just young. I didn't want to share you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. But I think the boys are very happy to share us, um, both mother and father, this side with whoever we connect. Well, thank you very much for, for um, the opportunity to be able to share with you again today. Um, Kylie is the musician that you saw a couple of weeks ago when he played the song Uptown Funk. And he is developing very well um, in this regard. And as a father, I'm very proud um, of him and his achievements, as we all are within the context of our home. We pray God's blessing upon you. God bless. Bye. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He shall restore my soul and guide me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And in God's own house I shall dwell forever and ever.
Michael's uh, Ken Kern. Ken is often at St Matthew's either doing one of the readings. <laughs> He's uh, been up to his neck on most things and and Lorraine and singing in the with, choir. Putting up with Peter's donkeys. <laughs> That's right. And now he's up to his neck in all sorts of other things as well. That's right. Uh, he knows what he's doing. So, uh, how long have you been involved with uh, with things with hooves? Since I was about three. There we are. So he's just settling into it. Yeah, she's fat, this one. Yep. Again. There we well are. Done. So we're being a bit fattest at the moment. Mm. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, look at that. You see this? Yeah. That's bad. Yeah, look at that. We can certainly oh. do something about that, yeah? Yep. Yep. So that's that why I wanted to take a picture before, yeah, and then show and after, the picture yeah. after. Just how but much. If we just left it, what would happen? Oh, they just keep on growing up. Well, remember yep. what she was like before? Yeah. They won't be able to walk. Really? Yeah. And then. That, that could take up to oh, 12 months. Yeah. 15 months, two years. Yeah. Because the foot just grows up. You know, I've seen them that long. Like, yeah. Just grow up. Terrible. Then to cut them back, it's a big job. Yeah. And they've got what they call a pedal bone in the middle of the foot. Yeah. And it, it's at the wrong angle, angle and, it, and it, in the end it pokes out and they're no good then. Yeah, yeah, that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah very yeah. sad. Very sad, yeah. So oh, it's just not... through neglect. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So it's not happening. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're very lucky they're out here, I must say. This is the most beautiful well, you've got spot. got Ken to come and give you a hand. And that's us, right. So. Yeah, and it's wonderful. And but, I must yeah. say, the, the Scots mean, are just uh, Well, somewhere to have your donkeys. Oh, yes. And they, um, and they know what they're doing and they care for their animals. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. They're a little bit of donkey heaven here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what tools do you use doing this? Well, this is what they call hoof cutters. Yep. They're about three hundred and seventy dollars. Yep. Uh, just your rasp. Yep. And a hand knife. Okay. It's not right. exactly like an emery board, is it? And a <laughs> pair of nail clippers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and you know what? Yep. Um, farmers yep. who had horses or donkeys' feet this long, yep. they use a grinder to cut them off. Really? Yep. Because yeah. they got, haven't got the right gear, no. so I think, oh, well, I'll, I'll fix them. <laughs> then yeah. they, um, and the hook, the animals that's sore, oh, yeah. they can't move. Yeah, you've got to know what you're doing, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, 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 so they, I, mean, absolutely. I mean, looking after a donkey is not really a DIY project, is it really? You know? no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And yet, yeah. a lot of people try and do it, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. they just yeah. absolutely stuff it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you ever thought about horses being a huge industry? But you're saying that, uh, that the racing industry, yeah, just is yeah. the second largest employer of staff in Australia. Really, amazing. Yeah. What do you think of what's in the racing industry? Yeah, yeah. trainers, jockeys, strappers, stable hands, betting industry. Yeah, the running the race tracks. The gardeners, the, the everything that's about the racing industry, yeah. and that's every day of the week. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And so, as we pray for the many challenges across our world, for us personally, corporately, we pray this prayer, which is really taken from the Farrier's Prayer. Hey, hey, hey. Dear Lord, give us strength to start each day and wisdom for whatever comes our way. When life is tough and kicks back, help us to know when to duck and strength to hold on until the job is done. Help us to help the lame to bear each other's burden until you bring us safe into your home paddock. Amen. <laughs> Ouch. So on Father's Day, we're thinking about making up the difference. You know, fathers, how do we think about their things of guidance and protection and provision. But for many people, they don't have those things. And uh, I'm so pleased that St Matthew's uh, Crisis Care, uh, for years, has been making up the difference, 365 days a year. And here we have Barbara Hoodless. Well, here we are in our little tiny food room, uh, <laughs> putting together some packages of food once again for those people who, um, who are in need for... 
the the uh, types of things that we have yeah. and um, we have stores and always uh, room for more if anybody has donations That's for, for sure. our there we shelves. Are. Blank, sh blank shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and also David Sutherland who's our outreach worker of course uh, during the time we're not in lockdown he's in the sanctuary arrayed in cloth of gold a crucifer uh, but he's our outreach work for homeless people so between uh, food um, and also personal outreach. Um, we try to make a difference. And so on Father's Day, we think about those people who really don't have um, those themes of um, care and protection in their lives. And we try to make up the difference. And thank you so much for all those community partners as well, like Rotary. Yes. Um, and um, and who, the who Masons. Who do support us. Amazing, yeah. yes. yes. And all those individuals just drop in yeah. and are thinking about others. So again, uh, thank you for the community who cares. And thank you to you both, to Barbara and to David. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Bye. He made my ears like that. <laughs> he made my nose. He made my eyes so I can see. Thank you for making me good. Making me. Here we are in our memorial garden at St Matthew's. Garden of Remembrance. And for so many of us at this Father's Day. We remember not just the fathers who are here on earth, but those also who are remembered and loved in heaven. And so Annette Gorham, head of our pastoral care team, uh, and we thought we might share with you uh, one of the readings that have really touched the hearts of so many, of uh, the younger people and older people as well. And uh, what's this particular reading, Annette? It's uh, from Winnie the Pooh. If ever there is tomorrow, when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we're apart, I'll always be with you. Thank you, Annette, thank you. God bless them all. Well, here we are at uh, St Matthew's virtual service, and what a wonderful time it is to wish everyone a very happy Father's Day, is that right? Yeah! I know. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> and so, uh, today Stevie's going to help us, aren't you? Yes, and lots of other children. We think about the way that uh, fathers are very important, aren't they? Yes? Yeah. I know. What's your father called? What's he called? Yeah. What's his name? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. That's right. Uh, so we thanking God for fathers uh, everywhere, aren't we? Uh, for your father, Stevie, for Peter. Yes. Yes. And praying for uh, fathers everywhere for all those We're who take care of ice us. Cream. And those who have ice cream as well. Exactly. Uh, yes. So uh, at home. At home. <laughs> In yes. every home around the world, we thank God for every father around the world and all people <laughs> who care for us, don't we? Yes. That's right. Why do you think fathers are special? Why do you think God should be looking after them especially? Even though he's a father too. Oh, our God is our father as well, that's right. Um, fathers are really important because if, if, our, if fathers didn't exist, moms would get too tired. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Because they have to do everything all by themselves, is that right? And why also fathers special? Do you think? And, and fathers are really special because fa without, without fathers, families wouldn't really exist because they're part of the family. Great. Hi, hi everyone. It's 
it's Dexter. Um, and today we're going to be questions about Father's Day and about our dad. What is special about my dad? Well, he helps me do a lot of stuff and he helps us with stuff like homework and stuff. So, yeah, that's special and himself. He's really special with himself. What do special jobs do fathers do to look after us? Well, what they do is they provide us with a house, shelter, they um, uh, drop us to school and sports, they let us play at the park, a lot of things. And yeah. Yeah. third one, what is best? The best thing we could give our dads and everyone who looks after us? A big kiss and cuddle and love. Especially to those of you who are having a hard time or feeling alone. We pray that God's big, warm love will make you feel close as we send our love to you on this very different Father's Day. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day! Yeah! Hi, Dad. What's that? I love you. 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 I love Wishing all our fathers a happy Father's Day and to their families as well. Thanks a lot. Happy Father's Day! So please join me now in the great prayer, the Our Father, the great family prayer that we are called to pray together often. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. This is Eliza, my granddaughter. Good morning, everyone. And she's going to help me with the notices this morning, or oh, so I hope. Happy Father's Day to all those dads out there and special thoughts to those dads who are no longer with us. Well, spring is here at last and there are buds on all the trees. The flowers are appearing everywhere. And if your garden's anything like mine, so are the weeds. But the new season is here. Thank you to the people who've gone to so much trouble to prepare today's service. The Keeping Connected uh, newsletter should have gone out to you by email and some by mail over this weekend. It was a lovely welcome today for Father's Day with Father Peter and, and little Stevie. It was so great to see Stevie again. Thank you, David Luxon, for sharing your family with us. 51 years ago, how long ago is that? I came to live in Albury and I lived across the road from Fran and David and uh, I used to babysit those kids. <laughs> The beauty of today's technical possibilities saw Rod Brown reading the epistle from Melbourne on WhatsApp. You might say, what's that, what's that? But some of you will know. Hi, Rod. <laughs> Paul Wood showing his great talent with amazing storytelling. And the music, as always, has been wonderful. How lucky we are to have Swell Vox, John Scott, Sally, Elspeth and James. Thank you so much. St Matthews wouldn't be St Matthews without some sheep, some donkeys and Ken Kerno. Not necessarily in that order, but how great was that? It's lovely to see so many family clips. And we see Lisa, who's um, Father Peter's sister and, and, of course, Sandra's daughter, and her two boys, Sam and AJ, signing from Queensland. Of course, they're Sandra's grandsons and she's very proud of them. Thank you, Bishop Clarence, Michelle, Carl and Kian, for joining the service today. The church does remain closed, but we are so pleased to be able to stay connected and share these wonderful gifts and friend of friendship. It's great to see how all the ages have been represented throughout the service today, animals and all. What a great flock you have, Father Peter, and how many times have we said that before? Please support and pray for all those healthcare workers in the front lines, and this is so important. Our healthcare workers in Aubrey have been under enormous stress. I have a daughter at St Vincent's in Melbourne and I know how difficult it's been for her and her workmates. Please keep looking out for those who are really struggling. If you know someone who needs some help, please let us know. Please continue your support of St Matthew's and our ministry by transferring your offering to by direct deposit to the church account. And stay safe everyone and have a lovely day.